Republican Glenn Youngkin is projected to win the race for governor of Virginia after a heated campaign. Kayla Townshie joins us right now. She's got more on this front. And, and Kayla, this does have some national implications as well. It sure does, Becky. Republican Glenn Youngkin securing 50.7 percent of the vote in Virginia, with about 99 percent of all votes counted. That's according to NBC News. The former Carlisle Group co-CEO uh, nabbing the first Republican victory at the state level in more than a decade by flipping coastal counties, elevating GOP support in deep blue cities, and lifting support of white women by 15 percentage points just since last year. That's by tapping into a highly charged debate over school curriculum and the role of parents in that. Here's Youngkin at his victory party early this morning. But we are empowered. We're empowered by a conviction, a righteous conviction in our children's future. We're strengthened by our collective belief in the Virginia promise. So let's climb that hill together. Let's reinvigorate our future. Former Governor Terry McAuliffe has not yet conceded. President Biden did not comment on the outcome of the race when he landed last night, but previously had said that he did not believe that his flagging approval and stalled agenda were factors. I've not seen any evidence that whether or not I am doing well or poorly, whether or not I've got my agenda passed or not, is going to have any real impact on when you're losing, even if we had passed my agenda. That's I partly want... true. About half of voters said that Biden's presidency impacted their vote one way or another, but that compares to 97 percent of voters in Virginia's last gubernatorial race, citing President Trump as a motivating factor. And this is providing a playbook for Republicans at the national level for how to go into the 2022 midterms, localizing some of these national issues in order to really uh, touch the, the minds and, and hearts of voters at the local level. And it's not just a view of of political wins and a gauge of sentiment in the nation, uh, Becky, Andrew, and Joe. There is a real predictive power in this Virginia race because of the timing and where it falls in relation to the presidential and the midterms. Hey, Kayla, it, depending on where you stand, it, it, people will look at this and say, look, they didn't do better because they haven't been able to enact more of their agenda, or people will say they it didn't do better because their agenda that they're trying to enact is, is, is too progressive. So how does this result, like, what will happen in Washington at this point? How does this play out? Well, it's hard to know exactly how it's going to play out in Washington. And Becky, there will be progressives who say that this is a sign that the president's agenda needs to be advanced much more quickly and expeditiously. Uh, but this race was really about issues at the local level. And some of these local institutions like school boards and city councils becoming much more progressive much more quickly than even the electorate was prepared for. I mean, Virginia has been turning deeper blue over the last uh, after over the the last 10 plus years, uh, but some of these institutions had turned an even deeper blue at a quicker pace. And it seems that this is a, a, a referendum essentially on that and Virginia voters saying uh, that's not where we want to see things headed here.